learn about the off-grid lifestyle and to be inspired to live your dreams, click subscribe so you don't miss anything. Hit the bell notification. yesterday's video I showed you that we were cleaning this area up right in here it's really hard to show you the scope of the work that we got accomplished we, I was editing the video this morning that I recorded yesterday and I thought man you're not gonna be able to see what Carolyn and I actually got accomplished if you can just tell from my excitement that we got a lot done and we got we got all of this up here cleaned up you can see the roots and vines that we were able to take out there's just a lot more space and this is not going to take very long at all to get cleaned up Going to get a chainsaw and we're going to take that stump out but you know we got a little bit of fence left here that's really going to expand our yard out again hard to see the scope and the magnitude of what this is actually going to do but heck we could almost put a garden here now this is really going to expand out our yard quite a bit you know maybe solar panels can go here lots of opportunities here that we haven't considered because it was just all gunked up well, enough about yesterday's video. Let's talk about today's video. Today's video, I am really trying to figure out how to put together. I've been working really hard on a new way of editing my videos and putting my videos together. And I'm trying to see what you like when you watch my videos. When I was a nomad, I would put my videos together and it was just me talking and then I would overlay some pretty scenery while I was talking. And that worked really well for three years. But it doesn't seem to do well now when I overlay me doing work or buying something or doing something over me talking. It doesn't seem to do well. People seem to fast forward through it. What does seem to be working is if I put my action movements, like two minutes of action, whatever it is I'm doing, building the floor to the tiny house. I put two minutes of me cutting the wood, screwing the wood together, different things. And those did really, really well. So I'm really thinking about how I'm going to put this video together. Today... We are going to go to Home Depot or Menards or, or both, and we're going to buy materials so we can get back to work on our tiny house. As I've said in several videos now, I mean tons of videos, almost every video it seems like, we're going to spend about $500 a month to build our tiny house. The floor here, the frame that you see that we've built out, this is a tarp, so you was actually about 36 bucks because we used recycled material. 
when we tore the trailer frame apart, we were able to get all this lumber off the trailer and we were able to reuse it. So that was a huge savings. So this month, we're gonna buy plywood and insulation. And I've done some rough calculations and I think it's gonna come up to about $200 uh, to get the screws and the staples and gotta buy a staple gun plywood and insulation but i also got to worry about buying things that i can actually live here on the property and i've said this before we're also going to buy a chainsaw now i don't think i'm going to buy a very expensive chainsaw and i know the lumberjacks out there and, and the professionals are going to really tell me that i need a great chainsaw but to me buying a chainsaw that is really expensive just doesn't seem to make sense one, I'm not going to be cutting down huge trees. I remember years ago, I was going to cut down this maple tree. Dad came over. He's, he's pretty skilled when it comes to cutting down trees. He's cut down trees all his life to heat his house. And he came over to help me cut down this huge maple. It had to been four feet, maybe five feet around, uh, in diameter, you know, across. It was huge, but it was hollow in the center. So I was able to use a little 14-inch chainsaw and just cut around it because it was hollow well this guy comes over with this like you know 18 foot chainsaw and he was actually causing a serious safety risk standing there underneath the tree i told him to leave because it was just too dangerous for him to be there i don't think it's wise for me to get something that is too much for me i'm not that experienced with the chainsaw i've used them i and i've actually used them quite a bit but i would never ever call myself a professional so I'm never going to do anything that I feel is too much for me to handle. I'm just going to be cutting down deadfall. I might cut down some little saplings like that. Maybe something that size, but nothing too extreme. I'm not going to get into a dangerous situation cutting down huge trees like this big oak. I'm not even going to try to tackle that. It's sitting here by the trailer and it's by the road. And I... I I would just feel very uncomfortable trying to cut something down that big, that massive, that heavy. And there's three of them sitting here that I would like to get down. I've called sawmills to see if they want to come and buy them, but they don't want to come out here and waste their time to, to buy them. It wouldn't be profitable for them. I find it funny because there's a sawmill just five miles down the road from us. And they said, no, not unless there's like 25 trees. They wouldn't come out. So I'm going to have to hire someone. I might be able to get up in the tree. We've talked about that. And just trimming some of these more dangerous limbs down. Like that guy's hanging over the tiny house right there. But again, I wouldn't want a huge chainsaw while I'm up there. As a matter of fact, I've talked about just taking the reciprocating saw. And just taking my time cutting those down with the reciprocating saw. That way I don't cut my leg off while I'm trying to sit up there taking the limb down. So that's going to be another, I don't know, probably $100, $150 they got Ryobi and Craftsman, depending on which store we go to, Menards or Home Depot. And I've been looking at different sizes. 38cc seems to be about the size that I think I want to cut down to deadfall. So that's going to put us right around $300, $350 for this tr trip to Home Depot. The problem is, is, of course, that's not $500 on the house. That being said, I'm still a lot further ahead not only financially, but as far as buying materials because I was able to recycle the material for the frame of the tiny house. So I feel like we're right on pace, right where we want to be, where we can be done in about 10 months. Uh, now next month, we're going to have to really focus on spending the entire $500 because we're going to have to buy doors and windows so we can frame out the, the wall. The two by fours won't cost a lot. It'd be the windows and the doors that are going to cost a lot. I'm thinking six windows maybe four at least and two doors so that's going to get kind of pricey windows can get up to 100 bucks a piece depending on what size you get i mean i'm going to try to find like 50 dollar ones you know, so if i got to spend you know 500 just on windows that means we don't build anything next month i want to keep moving forward and showing progress so we don't get discouraged and just stop doing it now that said i might be able to buy two windows for example and just build one wall that would that would still work. Also this month, I need to buy a wood splitter. Now I'm not gonna get a gas powered one or electric one. I've seen an electric one on YouTube, but I think it takes more power than what we can handle with our solar panels or our generator. So you know, I don't wanna get the electric one. But what I do wanna get is that Harbor Freight. 
Hubbard Freight sells this manual log splitter. They're really cool. I have one in the past. And it's got two handles. You put the log on the log splitter and you just pump the, the log splitter. It's 10 tons. I mean, it's massive. Which is actually, I think, 5 tons more than the electric one. And that's another $100. So that puts us right up there close to $500 for the month. Now, I am buying it, uh, all this material about a week early. And the reason I'm buying it early uh, is it's supposed to rain towards the end of the week. And I don't have any place to put five rolls of insulation so it doesn't get wet. So what we're going to do is we're going to buy it today, a week early, lay the insulation down, put the floor down, and then get it covered up so the insulation doesn't get wet. Because uh, starting Friday, it's supposed to start raining. It's going to rain again for a week. Thanks for watching.